Hey, everybody, this is Nick Mayhew, three-time gold medalist and three-time world record holder, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. For those that are tuning in, I want to thank you for joining us on the Power985.com website. We're available on the iOS and Android app. Also on Alexa, so add the Power 98.5 Satellite Radio in your Alexa skill. For all things Power 98.5, sports, celebrities, talk, and only the important stuff. Today, it's a beautiful day. I think we're going to be having about 108 degrees here in Las Vegas. We got some NBA events coming up this weekend. Also, starting next week, we've got Terry Tatiana. You're going to find out a lot about her, but so you're in the now. Head on over to the power985.com website. Go under talk shows, and you're going to see the lineup there of all of our top hosts in entertainment, sports, And Terry, you know, she's going to be bringing a lot to the table. We're going to be adding and extending out a show. It's going to be live with Stephen and Terry. We're not going to drop too much of these gems right now. But, you know, if you just get a taste of reading her bio, what she's doing in a world of public relations, media, fashion, entertainment, it's huge. We're going to be setting her up with uh, Candy Burris, one of her cast members from uh, Candy and the Gang, my good friend Brian going to be introducing both of them together since they're out of Atlanta. Um, I know Terry's going to be doing a lot of traveling, a lot of fashion shows coming up, but we're going, we got a lot in store for you. So we're going to get to our main star of the day, Kamari Bonds, best known for the hit Netflix show 20-somethings, Austin. This was a recent reality TV series I had the opportunity of watching. Big shout out to all the cast members that have, you know, been part of this project. One thing I will have to say and put it out there to Netflix that I would have loved to see or have seen a lot more uh, publicity surrounding this show. Um, It would have been a lot more noteworthy of what's going on because if I did not just shift through what Netflix was offering and what was to be had, I would never have found it. So we've got Kamari Bonds with us. Kamari, welcome to Live On Air with Stephen Quilk on Power 98.5, model, actor, and reality TV star. How you doing? What's up, man? I'm doing good. Appreciate the introduction. Thank you for having me today. You're, you're, you're very welcome. It's well-deserved. You're doing a lot of great things in the industry. You make it a very valid and strong point that fashion is huge within the signature and to the DNA of who Kamari Bonds is all about. Bring us up to date on to what's happening since the show within the industry. Are you having any uh, projects, anything behind the scenes that's going on, whether it be from television to runway? So currently right now, I'm still signed with my agency um, in North Carolina and the agency entourage that they saw me get signed with in Texas. Um, the market is good. The market is, of course, changing consistently just as far as the time of the season and what certain agencies may be looking for. Um, so I, my main thing is just continuing to be consistent. Uh, I actually, I got a call today. I'm working next week for champion. So that will be fun. Um, and really just working on getting signed into other agencies and bigger markets as far as like New York and LA. So that way I can continue to just travel and book bigger clients and just continue to do something that I love. 
Now, when it comes to champion, if you're at liberty to share with us, Kamari, is this going to be some sort of magazine campaign? Is it going to be a New York billboard, a television commercial? What's happening? Yeah, so this is just going to be basic e-com. So pretty much when you go onto the website and you're shopping, um, you're looking at the the products and whatnot. I'd be one of the models that you see on there. Um, and like with a company like Champion, I don't know if you notice, but like when you go to these websites, you usually see like the same group of models kind of just like filtering in and out wearing different clothes. So I've been blessed to to work my way up and be one of those models for Champion. So I work with them uh, pretty consistently. Shout out, shout out to everybody at Champion. I love y'all. You never know. You could end up on a New York billboard. You know, it's not unrealistic. Would you say? Yeah, no, definitely not. Like I've done so like right before I got the opportunity to do the show, I was actually going through the interview process when I was shooting um a winter fall campaign for them. And it's crazy because like the way like the industry works, like you'll take pictures and you'll never see them. And so I actually never even saw those pictures. And one day I was on YouTube and like got a, a random ad and it was me and like five of the other models I shot with. And I was like, yo, I'm I completely forgot about this. I never even saw these pictures. <laughs> but here's the thing. Why aren't they sending them out or being like, hey, Mr. Bonds, we've got this campaign that's launching. You're going to be on a website. Like that's important for you, for knowing your GPS and how to navigate to share on social media and to let other brands know what's current with you. Yeah, I think that was one of my questions early on because I'm like, yo, like I'm doing all this work and shooting these pictures. Like I want to be able to see the work. Um, so I guess I'll say like at the level I'm at right now, like I feel like what the clients usually do, cause it's a lot for them to go through the pictures. Once they have what they need, that's pretty much all they care about. So even now, like it started, <laughs> I would be uh, just chilling. Like my mom would send me this random picture of myself and I'm like, Oh snap. Like I, I haven't even seen this. Where'd you find this picture? At? <laughs> um, and so no, they never, they never tell you, but you can also, you can always just find yourself, um, floating up on a website or now if i was on a billboard i'm pretty sure that they would let me know like hey the campaign you shot is on a billboard or my <laughs> agent would at least my agent would at least let me know and at that point i'll pretty much reach out and be like yo like i need some of these pictures back from the client yeah and here's the other thing you are an advocate for the company so just think of the loss of exposure the free exposure they would get when you're like hey you know check me out you know go click on this link and, you know, see me in the updated, you know, fall or winter or spring fashion. So they'll catch up with the time sooner or later, but you are a Gen Z. Your generation is extremely smart ahead of the time. And, uh, if they don't learn, you'll eventually teach them. Always. <laughs> you'll <Most> definitely, <laughs> uh, one of the biggest things I would love to know is since the show, what have you been most proactive personally and professionally in your life? So let's start personally. What have you learned about yourself since Netflix 20 somethings and would you do it again? So for, for starters, I would say I would definitely do it again. Um, just having an experience like that in itself is very, it's, it's a blessing in itself. Um, and being pulled together, like, with eight other people from across the country and just thrown into this house and kind of just seeing what happens. It's, it's stuff that went on in that house and just things that we went through together as a family that you really had to be there to, to understand and experience it. But since y'all weren't there, like the way that I'll put it for you, it felt like one long ass overnight summer camp trip, mm -hmm. literally like it, it was so much fun. Um, and so I definitely came out of that with lifelong friends and family. And so I'm forever grateful for that. Um, and just as far as what I've been doing personally past the show, really making sure that I keep myself in a grounded state um, and that I continue to to focus on on what's next. And of course, I'm very grateful for everything that's happened. But it's like the way that I live life and the way that I move is like, okay, the show was done. Like it was a great opportunity and it changed my life forever. Um, but now it's kind of like, what can I do next? Um, you feel me? I've realized a portion of, of my dream. And so it's just like, what can I do to get to that next level? Um, and things that I can do to get to that next level are 
just keeping myself in my routine and doing the things that got me to this point. Um, so I've just been um, trying to take it to the next level as far as like my knowledge of things that I'm interested in so I can get into these different industries. Um, and so it's, it's an everyday process. Good. You still there? Yeah, I'm still okay, there. Okay, I wasn't too sure if I lost you. You ended very, very good, but very interesting in a way towards like, did, is he still here or not? <laughs> <laughs> um, when it, we think about the exhilaration, the high, the energy, do you still feel just as inspired and exhilarated um, after the fact now or are you just running on some sort of different type of adrenaline or rush or inspiration? That is a, that's a very good question. Um, and that's why, that's why I was saying I'm grateful for what happened, but now it's kind of like, what's next? Because of course, like when the show dropped, like it was, it was my first time being introduced to the world and like me being on TV. Like I was on a Netflix reality show. And so, that's a big reality change. And there's a lot that can come with that. And so there was this high that I was living off of just cause it's like, you see all the followers going up and you see all these emails of possible brand partnerships. And you know, then you have people recognizing you when you're out in public and whatnot. And then you got your family that's just so proud of you and your friends just want to know every single detail. Um, and it was definitely a high and, it still is a high just because it's still a high because it's like, okay, for me, it's kind of like confirmation. Like I know I'm, I'm on the right path, but now uh, about six months after the show, it's something to where you have to, you have to find it within yourself to, to keep going and kind of give yourself that your own high off of life, um, which is something that, uh, ET says a lot like what's the difference between motivation and determination and it's like motivation you feel me it comes from internally so it's just like continuing to stay motivated um and keeping that fire alive within me so that way when I'm in my next opportunity and when I'm doing the next project I still have I'm still on that that certain vibrational level and my energy is up to par you know it's known it's no secret Kamari that you believe in to do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. We know that you embrace change. You've expressed that in the past and you don't mind exploring different opportunities. If we think about who you are, how successful you are, how highly intelligent you are, if you were to have a moment and life, God, the universe, even your own self-intuition were to be like, you know what? I've had my experience in television, modeling, acting, and I believe I've done everything I wanted to do, could do, and I truly feel and know that I'm successful for what success means to me, and I'm ready to move on to something differently. Is there another version of Kamari in this timeline where if modeling and acting and television didn't or doesn't exist for you, what would you be doing? Um, I think, well, I'll, I'll start off by saying there's, there's definitely another version of me. Um, I think there's, there's plenty of versions of all of us. It's just a matter of us actually tapping in to that version. So I, I would say if I wasn't if I wasn't modeling, acting and doing doing TV, I would be an artist um, 100 percent. I would be a painter or a fashion designer um, or somebody like Daniel Arshin, who is just an artist of all sorts from creating interior design pieces to art pieces to art sculptures um, made out of like granite and quartz crystals. Um, and things of that nature because I, I love art like i've always loved art and it's something i really want to get back into actually but that would definitely be my second calling i'd be an artist is that something you feel and believe that you can start now within this time you've just got the champion deal things are happening for you knowing that you've got 1440 minutes 
86,400 seconds in a day to do as you wish, Kamari. Is that something that, even to speak for myself, you're going to surprise me with in this timeline, in this dimension, in this life? And, uh, you know, hopefully not put it on the back shelf to strongly consider that this can be a reality now and unexpectedly could open up doors for you you never expected before. Yeah, um, 100%. I actually, I'm so glad you're saying that because, again, it's just confirmation for me to to get up and, and make a move. Um, it's definitely a, a, a reality that can happen now. I still, I love to draw. I have this huge canvas just sitting in my closet um, and I don't know what I'm waiting for. So I definitely think I'm going to surprise some people just because not many people know me as an artist, but the people that have been around me, they know I've always loved to draw um love to paint took art a few years during school and i love to play around with the different mediums so i definitely think that you guys can expect to see some sort of art from me um especially with all this digital stuff going on it may be digital it may be like physical art um but i'm definitely excited to to step into that because like you said i would hate to miss out on that opportunity when i know it's something like very close to my heart so but i'm at a point now where I know at one point I wanted to kind of create art and like show people like, oh, like I'm an artist too. Or like I can do this, that, and the third, but I'm at a point now where it's kind of just the uh, outlet, um, a way of expression for me. So I feel like I'm just going to create pieces that I love and that mean something to me. And I know that they'll, they'll touch the right people. One of the strongest things that I will say to you, what I truly believe, and I appreciate your candor, and transparency is that art is a huge fundamental um, prospect, aspect, and commodity in the fashion and entertainment world. And many people, especially when we think of, you know, Halston and a lot of, you know, fashion designers from the 80s and 90s use backdrops heavily within fashion shows. Now, when we think about fashion shows, I'm, I know you're very familiar, you know, whether they're outdoors or however they may be, you know, a, a lot of times the main focus is on fashion. But when we think of lights and music or certain areas of fashion, backdrops and props are still used very heavily. How interesting would it be, Kamari, that you begin to apply and imply your per perception of the fashion industry and experience into your backdrops, into your art, and think of reaching out or connecting with up-and-coming fashion designers or reaching out to maybe fashion designers from Project Runway and inviting them or asking them if they need an art piece backdrop for an upcoming fashion show and even offer that if they have a men's line, you would like to be part of it. If it's just a woman's line, to add in your art piece. Yeah, I, I love that idea. Um, just because the worlds are so fashion and art, they are so intertwined with each other. And it's crazy because like that's one of the main things that I notice when I'm watching a fashion show. Um, for, like, I love the way that Virgil does his fashion shows, um, just as far as like having a whole setup. I think on his, his fall winter collection that they just did the last collection that was actually designed by Virgil himself they had this huge house that was like demolished um and it looks like they were sitting on the top of it and like art just like fashion to me is art that's moving you know and so just just wearable art and so being able to create a dope piece that would be in the backdrop um I think that would be that would be very dope and actually one of my best friends and I we used to we've done a few fashion shows together and so I think that's definitely something that even we would love to incorporate. Um, but I would definitely, I would love to reach out to some of the people from Project One Way. My mother loves that show. <laughs> um, and see if we can work together in the future. I also suggest, you know, from the recent season 19, um, Octavio Aguilar. Um, okay. I can see, you know, your potential art pieces, even though I don't know anything about them yet. But in my head... You know, just knowing the fashion industry as well as I do and having had worked with, you know, designers from Project Runway and outside of Project Runway, you would fit perfectly, not only as a, you know, director 
um, or, you know, a producer within the art aspect in creating art installations for these shows. I believe that it's going to take you not only financially, personally and professionally, mentally and emotionally to other areas and dimensions of yourself that is going to broaden you in ways that university and college could never do. Yeah, no, uh, definitely 100%. Like that that last statement that you just said um, brought me in other ways that like universities could never do. That is like... So when I was in college, I actually, I had a fashion merchandising minor um, my up until my sophomore year. And just because of some stuff that happened, I ended up dropping it. But as I was talking to myself and just going through it, like thinking if I wanted to drop it or not, what I was telling myself was there's certain people that I'm going to be shadowing, working with, and just actually getting that, that real world experience that I could never learn if I sat down in the classroom and learned, you know? Um, I believe I got to get out there and like actually, like we say, like really get in the field and put that work in. Um, cause that's, that's personally how I learned the best, you know, I'm a visual person. So I would love to do something like that. Is there anything that's happening with you that you would like to do in your life that you believe you can accomplish and do that immediately now in order to inspire and to help future generations and people out there that just have given up because this really is a hard time right now for all people of all ages um, that are relocating. They have no idea what to do. They have degrees. They're not utilizing them. You are very aware as we all are where the temperature is at when we think of international affairs, finances. Is there any type of resolve or hope that you can offer to the listeners or anyone out there in the world right now? Um, definitely. I think, I think my biggest service to people at this very moment is, okay, so like my friends and just the people that are close to me, I always tell people like, you're not going to be put into a room that there's not space for you. And you need to be on a vibrational level of the opportunity or the life that you actually want. And so I would say when it comes to personal development and like just mindset, that would be my biggest service. Um, Just by trying to tell people the little things that they can do to to become a better you, just as far as having a a better diet, going to the gym consistently, um, creating a, a certain routine that keeps you aware and grounded. For me, it's waking up in the morning and meditating and journaling. Um, Because I think, I think that a lot of people get so caught up in looking at the next person that they don't even realize like the person that they're looking at and kind of envying or like, maybe they may be a little jealous of it's like all those things are available to them as well, but they have to, to look inward for that. And once you find that inward, it'd be, it'd be an abundance and an excess of it around you. You know, um, it's not a, it's not a coincidence. Like, you know, when people say when I change, everything else changes. And so I think my main thing would just be getting people to know that it all, it starts with you and just the decision. You've described yourself, Kamari, as a creative entrepreneur. Tell us more about what that means to you and what you're doing in the world. So of course, like just, being a, a basic entrepreneur, a business starter, somebody that works for themselves, someone that's always grinding, going on s- numerous business ventures, um, even called a, a self-proclaimed serial entrepreneur. Um, and so I grew up, I was raised by two self-employed parents. Uh, my dad was a hairstylist growing up. He had his own hair salons. My mom was a nail technician. She had her own nail salons. Uh, my brother, He's six years older than me. He got into culinary arts around like middle school. And now he's a he's a private chef. And just like being surrounded by all of these people working for themselves, I was like, yo, like, I want to work for myself. I want to be able to dictate dictate when and how long I work want to work. Um the main thing that that made me have that mindset was my mom used to always tell me, nobody's ever gonna pay you what you think you're worth. And so 
that was kind of the whole, that's what planted the seed for me wanting to be an entrepreneur. Um, now, when it comes to putting creative in front of that, me, myself, like I'm very creative. I consider myself a creative person um, just because of things from like my ear for music, my love for art, uh, my passion for fashion, just things of that nature. So it's like anything that I'm doing as far as like a business venture, it's going to be given and conducted in a sort of creative way. And like my first business venture was an organization that my friend and I had started in college called Diamond Productions. And we were doing, we were doing everything from directing, producing, modeling. Um, I wasn't doing this part, but like choreographing new dances and like putting out music. And so it's like everything that we were doing, it had some sort of creativity in it. And I think that everybody is creative. Um, I think that everybody u- utilizes creativity, even in their everyday jobs, whether they know it or not. Like that's a basic problem solving, it's something that you have to have for basic problem solving. And so I guess I just try to embody creativity in everything I do. Um, so that's that's why I call myself a creative entrepreneur. It fits you perfectly. And uh, I, I appreciate what you shared about what your mom had said that people are not going to pay you what you're worth. And there are moments I have said to people and it wasn't in an arrogant manner. It was in a way to where if ever feeling challenged of uh, about self-worth, I have no problem saying to somebody if it's appropriate or the right time to say it, that you will dig for gold even after your death to learn or to figure out or to find out what my self-worth is all about. Because without having that level, and I believe you can get this, and, and we've had some good conversations, Kamari, that there people misinterpret good or healthy self-esteem with arrogance. And I believe having a good self-esteem, a healthy self-esteem, shows itself through um, how would I say, um, candor, um, forthcoming, uh, perseverance and, mm-hmm. and, and prosperity, you know, success and growth. A master is a student and teacher all at the same time in an arrogant way. I believe it's when something is being shoved in your face. Ooh, look at my yacht. Ooh, look at me. Look at this. Look at that. And there is a difference between the humble part and the arrogant part. I believe that you have a way and you as a teacher is going to teach a lot of people that no matter what you have in life, it's all about self, self self-image, self-worth, self-perseverance, self-identification and truth. And you are that person that's going to continue. And that's what I've had the opportunity to learn about you, Kamari, is Everything is about truth with you. One way or another, let's get down to the truth. What is going through your mind? How do you feel about me saying that to you? Uh, that, like, that aligns with everything that I believe in. Um, one of my one of my main things you touched on it the the difference between like arrogance and confidence, and I I hate it because I see it so many times. Like, I notice that not a lot of people are confident and I get it because there's, there's phases of everybody's life that we go through where, you know, you may be dealing with something or you may just not be having the best day. So, you know, naturally you don't feel as confident. Um, but like when it, when it really comes down to it, I hate to see so many people that aren't confident in themselves and what they have. And they look at people who are confident, confident in themselves and, you know, what they have in their life. And it's, it's kind of like they're looked, they're looked down upon them. Like they tell them to, to be humble. Um, and it's like, everybody is great in their, in their own way. And as long as you're not taken away from the next person, 
or like you said, shoving it in somebody else's face or, you know, trying to one up somebody like I hate seeing people that I know aren't arrogant be called arrogant. And I, I've gone through that myself. And that was actually something that my mom taught me about, like from a young age. My mom is from my mom's from New York. And so when she was sent down south to uh, to live down here at a young age, like she had a lot of girls that like didn't like her and whatnot. Cause you know, like from uh, from up north, like you from up north, like you you fly, you you on the latest music, fashion sense, and all that. And it's like she just told me what she had to go through herself as far as knowing, like just knowing yourself and always staying true to who you are and not listening to the outside noise and he say she say and just always being confident in yourself but just piggybacking off of that to be confident in yourself you have to love yourself and a lot of people they don't love themselves and you do have to learn how to love yourself um unconditionally and it's the same way it's a choice to love somebody else it's a choice to wake up and love yourself every day so I, I hope to see that grow, that theme grow um, amongst the, the masses. But I just hate seeing people who never reach their full potential because they're not they're not confident in themselves. Do you believe before we close out, do you believe that you understand and respect your self value enough, Kamari, where you no longer have to explain who you are to anyone else? A hundred percent. Um, and especially like coming off the show, I have a lot of people who don't necessarily know me. All they see was, all they saw is like me being showcased on a, on a reality show where they just go to my Instagram to see that. But it's like, I know that they don't know me as a person. I know the people in my life who do actually know me and who opinions matter. And so it's like, when the outsiders are talking, that's it's just outside noise. Um, I'm confident in myself. I know I'm not a bad person. You know, I, I know my morals and values and ethics. So other than that, it's like they can say whatever they want to. That don't that don't affect me. Yeah, it's not part of your script, your novel, your chapter, or even your life series. <laughs> not at all. We write our own stories. Kamari, I want to thank you for being with us today live on air with Stephen Quoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Don't forget, share with your friends, your family to download the Power 985 app, iOS or Android. Tune in on Alexa, add it into your Alexa skill. The Power 98.5 Satellite Radio is always available 24-7 on Stream or Streama, Live Tuner, Live FM Radio, and many more. 200 countries and counting. Uh, you can go to the power 985com website click the bottom right hand tick send us the message uh your thoughts on what you um thought about this show today with kamari bonds actor model reality tv star kamari who would you like to give a shout out to oh uh, man shout out to all my boys in the six listening shout out to my grandma it was her birthday yesterday love you um of course shout out to my mother my father my brother um just everybody who's been part of my my journey and my experience up until this point of course shout out to the whole 20 somethings cast and family miss y'all love y'all um and just shout out to to anybody who supports me uh if you support me i appreciate it know that the feeling is mutual i support you as well know that you're great um and shout out to you steven for having me <laughs> on here today you're welcome i appreciate you man you, you're a stand-up guy we've had some great conversations so i look forward to just continuing to talk to you in the future and continue to build man i appreciate you for the day i appreciate you and and it, it's truly an honor kamari to have you with us and you're not going to be a one-hit wonder we're going to have you on again so keep me posted about any upcoming projects anything going on and you know my phone is open to you anytime if you have any questions regarding anything business or personal what would be the best social media platform to connect with you for fun, personal, or even to book you for a, an opportunity, whether it be on the camera or off? Uh, I'll say the best the best network to get to me on would be Instagram. My Instagram is I am Kamari Bonds. So I am in my first and last name. Um, and then if you guys just want to see some behind the scenes of my life of course you can subscribe to me on snapchat uh kamari bonds with three s's and then i'm on tiktok as well at i am kamari bonds so 
yeah make sure y'all get at me on the socials i've been posting some more content um and we'll be on youtube soon so stay tuned you've been doing very well thanks again for the promo video we love it the team loves it and uh enjoy the sun enjoy the weather i think summer is going to be going by a lot faster than what we think i don't know how your days have been going please share but i literally had two days one where it was like after four o'clock and it felt like i only had two hours that i had of the day like it was a productive day kamari but literally i went from like around 7 36 in in the morning and then all of a sudden it was after four and i said to one of my friends i was like where the heck did this day go then the following day, it felt like time was going slower. And I was thinking to myself, God, I can't believe it's it's two o'clock in the afternoon. So what's your days have been like? Has that been happening almost as if time has skipped hours ahead and you're wondering what has happened? And then other days you're like, okay, I can do a lot and get a lot of performance done today. Yeah, time is definitely moving on its own time. Um, even like today, like you said, I was up seven now i'm sitting here looking at the clock and it's about to be four o'clock and i'm just like yo like where did the day go um like there's never enough hours in the day and then like you said other days i'm like yo it's still sunny outside like <laughs> it, this has been a, a long day so I don't, I don't know what's going on but summer's definitely moving faster <laughs> than we would like um i guess we just gotta enjoy every day to its fullest it's true. Well, keep us posted, you know, on social media, TikTok and everywhere else about what's the latest fashion for summer. We've got fall coming up and, uh, you know, in a fashion world, they're usually six months ahead of time. So would love to see uh, any tips that you would like to uh, share or offer. And once again, get to those installations, start with backdrops, you know, play around, have fun, reach out to designers. Uh, with your level and your status and your expertise, I believe someone would definitely love, and, and fall's a great time for fashion shows, um, where your art installations can oh, be yeah. included in. Yeah, most definitely. It is, it's that time, um, especially at New York, New York Fashion Week is coming up yeah. soon, so definitely got to put some work in if i'm not if i have it my way i'll be walking and having some work somewhere so well kamari we appreciate you you're always part of the power 98.5 satellite radio family uh look forward to finding out and learning more about what's happening with you um in your world and uh definitely i hope to be first at the top of the list to find out what's going on with your art and uh where it's going to be included um, is there anything else you want to share before we close out? Uh, I will say anything I want to share. I'll say, if you listen to this, just always put your best foot forward, do the best thing that you can believe you're the person you want to be even before you're that person and everything will fall in place. Um, and I also, I have a, I have a THC cannabis company. Um, cause I know you guys out in Vegas. So if you guys like to live life on the higher end, um, y'all check out deuces 222.com. That's my angel number. Uh, me and my dad company, we started that. So yeah, I read just about give a that. shout out to deuces. Okay. And just so people know, and I, and I want to read something real quick. Cause you just, um, you just reminded me of something and I believe in that very much. We're going to look that up. So. Angel Technology 222. And I just recently saw that number yesterday. 222 is a message of hope, uh, representative of balance, harmony, life choices, commitment, compromise, and trust. It is a sign you can build on your current situation to achieve your goals and more. You might see angel number 222 when you have important decisions, conflicts, or changes in your life. Yep, sounds that's sounds about right. Um, it's pretty. It's like you know, right place, right time. Um, for those of you who don't know, an angel number is just it's a set of numbers. Is I don't know what everybody you know believes in, but your spirit guides, your angels that are consistently just watching over you. Um, anytime you see these numbers, it's kind of just like confirmation that everything is good, everything is gonna be all right. 
Um, and two, two, two for me is just like confirmation that I'm doing the right thing. I'm at the right place at the right time. Um, and all of those other characteristics that you just named off. Um, so it's pretty dope. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you again to everyone joining us today on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Kamari Bonds, model, actor, reality TV star from Netflix 20-somethings. Find out all things about Kamari. Head over to his TikTok, his Instagram. Check out his company with his dad. And one more time, Kamari, give us your um, your dad, yours and your dad's um, business page. So it's called... So on Instagram, it's Deuces Wellness. Um, Deuces, like you throwing up the deuce on. Mm -hmm. D-E-U-C-E-S. Wellness. W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S. Perfect. And then the... Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, uh, and then the website is just deuces222.com. Love it. Thank you for sharing with us that. I uh, wish you and your dad much success. Um, I will definitely, you know, check that out. My team will check that out. Take a look at that. And uh, hope you have a great day, Kamari. To everyone, thank you again. We're going to re-air this episode. Uh, we're going to do Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Once again, all things Kamari Bonds business acting modeling and reality tv 2 p.m friday july 8th 2 p.m eastern power 985.com friend us on your socials and let's connect 